welcome back to the Traveling, Traveling in a New Vegan World Online Summit 2022. I am Bridie and I am one of the organizers of the summit and I'm also the co-founder of World Vegan Travel. I want to welcome everybody who is joining us today for this really interesting session. I would like to join, I would like to introduce Leanne from A Billion uh, App. Um, and she is going to be talking about a really interesting report that her company, the um, company that she works for, has developed. So I'm really excited to um, have Leanne on. Thank you for joining us. Thank you for having me. Before we start, I just want to do a little bit of housekeeping. First of all, I want to remind all of our participants that uh, they are free to ask any questions in the live chat. Uh, and um, I hope Leanne and I will be in the chat to answer any questions. You could also add any comments that you would like to, and we will be getting back to those over for the next few days of the presentation going live. I want to thank all of the sponsors of the summit um, that are participating. We've got Vegan Vacations, Green Earth Travel, um, um, Margie Travels, Well Vegan Travel, and uh, Veg Voyages, and Tieno Tours that are all sponsors and have brought this event into existence. So thank you so much. If you find this information useful and you want to come back to this replay, this replay will be also available uh, within 24 hours of the event going live. And also you will be able to access this up until five days after the event has finished. So you have a decent amount of time to be able to come back and to enjoy the content one more time. Um, I also want to remind you that there's also some giveaways with this uh, talk as well. If you sign up to the if if you sign up to and register this, this talk, if you are one of um, several giveaway winners, actually a billion is going to be making a donation on your behalf, which is really really cool. And um, I think that's it. So with all of that out of the way, I want to pass you over to Leanne, who's currently talking to us from Bristol. Thank you for joining us, Leanne. Thank you for having me. Yeah, very, very strange that I'm doing this from Bristol as opposed to from Singapore or a bigger city. Um, but, but thank you for having me. Very happy to be here. Awesome. Thank you. So I uh, why don't you start us off by just telling us a little bit about you and the work that you do for a billion? Of course. So my name is Leanne Adamopoulos. Uh, I'm the associate director of business development and sales at a billion. I was raised for most of my life in Singapore and had the pleasure of attending university in Sydney and living there for, for a lot of the formative years of my life. Um, I spent the first few years of my career working in sports and entertainment, whether that be sports agencies or, or at a global sports media property, which was obviously incredibly fun and I loved it. Um, however, the last two years, especially being in and out of lockdowns and in this pandemic made me realize that I wanted to be um, in an industry and doing something more purpose and, and mission driven. Um, I've always been very interested in nutrition and, and how what you eat not just affects the mind and the body, but also the environment at a macro and a micro level. So I knew I wanted to be in an industry that encouraged people to make healthy and sustainable choices for themselves and for the environment. So very luckily I was put in touch with a billion last year and it's been a very purposeful and I feel very rewarded knowing that the last few months that my job helps others to make you know, healthy and sustainable decisions that will help them um, both not in their just mind and body, but also in the environment in the long run. So my role in a billion is to, to help formulate and execute um, the commercial and business development strategies for the company. And I'm also very lucky enough to be connecting brands and restaurants um, worldwide to our platform of, of very avid um, and high intent users. Awesome. Thank you so much for that introduction. So I know it's not the topic for today. Um, we're not doing like a walkthrough of the app in a huge amount of depth, but I do feel like now is a really good time to tell people about the app because 
it's very powerful. And I think even if you maybe checked out the app a couple of years ago, there have been a lot of changes that have been made. So I'm wondering if you could just sort of describe a little bit about this app and what it does, maybe give us a bit of a walkthrough. Um, is that okay? Yeah, of course, of course. So um, to put it simply, a billion is a social media platform for social good. Um, you know, we, we're the world's fastest growing sustainability platform that helps conscious consumers discover, review, and shop for vegan food and sustainable products worldwide. So essentially, our platform makes living sustainably as, as seamless and as fun as possible. We've been downloaded over a million times worldwide, and, and members have reviewed over a quarter of a million different products, um, 120,000 different brands, and over 200,000 vegan dishes around the world. Um, so though the app is primarily a review, has a review function, uh, we also have social networking functions so that members can share engaging content or, you know, vegan recipes and sustainable content, um, including short videos. And we will be implementing a marketplace shortly so that people can shop seamlessly from the comfort, you know, of their couch through the app um, worldwide. So um, we also have a unique giving back model where for each review that gets posted, we give the reviewer US $1 to then donate to any one of our 60 charitable partners and causes worldwide. So, so partners range from farm animal welfare groups to nature conservation partners, as well as food security charities. Um, we've essentially gamified giving back. And we, and we encourage our users to review more vegan dishes and products to, to not only help themselves and other conscious consumers, but also to help um, our charitable partners and, and our causes who tie into our goals and values. Um, you know, as we're, as we're building a social community, a global social community that makes social impact and sustainability a habit for everyone, um, we find this so useful for vegan travelers who will find our platform valuable for their trips. Um, vegans, you know, travelers can then use the app while on the road, while on the road or, or in a new country um, and can ensure that they continue to honor their plant-based and sustainable lifestyles and spend more time enjoying their destinations and activities and experiences and making memories in these new places instead of having to worry about it if there are plant-based options in their area. So, you know, right now I'm in Bristol, which isn't exactly the food capital of the world, but um, you know, I've, I've been lucky enough to use the app and, and do walk around tours, finding great vegan pho or you know, vegan pies um, throughout the last few days. So it's, it's a very valuable tool to be using on the road for travelers at the moment. Yes, um, I will concur. I have um, submitted a few reviews and I have to say, I didn't really fully understand that, that you, you, you will make a donation on my behalf for this, for a review, which, I have, will say I'm going to I'm going to take up my reviewing upper level I think but um, <laughs> personally I really like the idea of I mean I love happy cow I think happy cow is great and it serves a wonderful purpose but you know in order for a restaurant to be listed on happy cow for example if, if I understand well the restaurant needs to be considered vegan friendly mm -hmm. and um, and it doesn't accept applications for vegan friendly restaurants when there are a lot of vegan restaurants around, which I think is a fair thing, thing to do. But if I understand well your platform, you can submit any vegan restaurant in, sorry, any vegan dish in any vegan restaurant anywhere so for example a few weeks ago a while ago or so i reviewed a um a restaurant a brewery actually that happened to have um vegan cheese platter and i mean how fun is that that people will then be able to discover this this brewery so yeah and it it is it is maybe it's a little bit more social than than yeah. happy cow is perhaps i, we, I don't know if that's a fair there. comment but We've made uh, being plant-based and, and vegan accessible to everyone. We don't want to discriminate against, you know, any restaurant that may not be a vegan restaurant per se, but are, you know, offering vegan options. So we, we have made it as inclusive as possible um, to also try to, I guess, arm non-vegans and just conscious consumers, someone who might be a flexitarian or an omnivore, but at the same time is very hyper aware of what they're putting in their body, on their body. Um, we, we want to make it inclusive for them. So they, you know, if they happen to find themselves at a restaurant with a friends, with friends at a brewery, or, you know, even like a normal, you know, a, a, a restaurant that has 
only a few vegan options, um, they can use our, our tool as our app as a tool to still remain a conscious consumer while at restaurants that aren't necessarily just vegan. And I will say that I absolutely love your branding and your user interface. It's it's really, really nice. Yeah, thank yeah. you. Listen, I'm going to use some t-shirts and swag packs. Don't you worry. <laughs> I hope you look good in orange. <laughs> awesome. Great. Thank you. Nice. So our topic for today is this report that Abillion has recently published. And this is what we're going to talk about today. It's really kind of cool. So Tell us, what is this report about and why did you or why did a billion decide to commission this report? Of course. So we launched the inaugural A Billion Cities of the Future report late last year. We have an incredible team of data scientists and researchers in-house and um, you know, they've assessed global metropolitan cities on how much they, these cities have embraced and made plant-based lifestyle accessible within the cities. As well as the cities, as well as the city's commitment to green policies, um, as well as these cities' greenhouse gas and waste generation, um, we wanted to really help conscious consumers make educated decisions on where to travel now that many places are opening up after you know two years of on and off lockdowns, um, and even you know potentially where to relocate if they're looking to move. You know, I, I personally believe where we live today matters more than ever. Um, millennials and Gen, Gen Z especially are hyper mobile and having, you know, and, and have placed an equal importance on personal well-being and lifestyle as they have professional success and, and jobs. So a city that honors diversity and inclusion and commitment sustainability will drive where these con conscious generations will, will want to live in the years to come. And I believe that we will have the, the report actually attached to the media section of this uh, of this talk. So anyone that's listening that would like to go and see the report for themselves and download it and read it, um, I think they would get a lot from that. So just go to the media and, and download it. Fantastic. So um, what were the results of this report? So the Cities of the Future report was based on over uh, 850,000 authentic reviews, user reviews contributed by 32,000 members for over 150 countries and 6,000 cities. So we really narrowed it down quite a fair bit. Um, you know, these cities were then given scores computed for four categories. Um, one being one category being accessibility of plant-based living. So whether you can go into a plant-based, you can get plant-based dishes, or if there's plant-based friendly um, restaurants, sorry, restaurants or, or grocery stores in, in these cities. Um, secondly, being the city's policy commitments. Third being the greenhouse gas emissions. And the fourth being the waste generated from each city. So these cities are then placed in a scoring system with from one being the, the best rating to, to four being the, the worst rating um, within these four categories, categories before being averaged out. So London actually came in at number one, excitingly enough, um, followed by LA, Barcelona, Melbourne, Sydney, sorry, Singapore at number five, Johannesburg, Toronto, New York City, Berlin, and then being rounded out by Cape Town. Um, so all very exciting and all very, um, and big cities that I think that, that there was no surprise um, from this list. I think it's all very future-friendly cities that, that come to mind. Um, I'll, I'll discuss a little bit about each city now, if, if that's okay, but London came in at, at um, number one primarily because of two factors, its embrace of plant-based lifestyle, and because the city has such a strong political commitments to the green policies which are implemented and then recorded with transparency. So most people in London actually are very well versed on sustainability rules and regulations because it's been you know a hot topic in London for such for, for some time now. Um, so immense progress has been made on emissions and and um, transport and and you know implementing green spaces and and cleaning up air quality and and really investing in clean clean energy. Um, and I think this is being this I, I see a trickle down effect with these policies where now most companies an example is most companies and consumers. Um, are very sustainability conscious. And, you know, example is most employers in London actually offer a cycle to work scheme where they, you know, essentially give tax breaks to those who, who cycle to and from work 
um, and encourages commuters to cycle instead of drive to work. And anyone who's been to London can attest that the traffic is terrible. Um, so, you know, if I were to be living in London, I'd be cycling every single day. And that obviously cuts down your, your, you know, your CO2 emissions um, as an individual. So imagine a whole city doing that. Um, LA came in at a very close second, which was buoyed by uh, new mayor Eric Garcetti prioritizing uh, combating climate change as part of his political agenda. Um, he, he launched the LA Sustainable City Plan, which is a roadmap towards a cleaner environment. Um, what I, something I find very interesting is that it's a very, there's a very cool vegan fine dining culture in LA, um, which hopefully also has a trickle down effect to, to fast, you know, FMC, uh, fast food chains and, and um, more run of the mill um, restaurants if, if the cool fine dining places are doing this. Um, Barcelona came in third, backed by the city's commitment to be carbon neutral by 2050 and low emissions and their waste, low race, race rates. Um, and the city is also birthplace of innovative alternative meat companies like Hura and Grin Grin, which is well loved by our billion members for their wonderful vegan cheese. Um, unsurprisingly, Melbourne came in at fourth. Um, as produce is one of Australia's major exports. And I think we all agree where Australia, when you think of Australia, you think of a very sustainable um, forward focused um, cities within Australia. Um, Australia in a whole is the third fastest growing vegan market in the world at 9.6% um, year on year. So it's only fitting that the cultural epicenter of, of, of Melbourne, any Sydney friends hearing me say this will probably get mad at me for calling Melbourne the cultural epicenter, but unfortunately it is. Um, and so it's no surprise that Melbourne comes on the list and you know, the city aims to cut greenhouse gas emissions to zero by 2050 while still really pop, uh, planning for rapid population growth in the city. Um, and very, very, very exciting for, for, for the team at a billion considering we are based out of Singapore is that Singapore comes in at number five um, and has seen, you know, the last few years it is now seen as the hub of sustainability in Asia and food tech giants and, and food tech startups alike have taken to base themselves out of our little red dot of an island, um, which it's, it's great to see. So um, Johannesburg in South Africa comes in at six, or by the fact that it's only, it has a perfect score for producing very little waste. Uh, a little fun fact is that for a city of 5.6 million people, it only produced 1.7 um, million tons of municip municip municipal waste in 2017. Um, which is incredible for a city of that size. Um, coming in at seventh is Toronto, due to its grassroots plant-based movement and you know farm-to-table restaurants, as well as the city's generous spending towards environmental efforts. Um, New York landed number eight with movements on a restaurant level, um, restaurant restaurant levels making waves in culinary circles. So award-winning fine dining restaurants such as Levin and Madison Park. Uh, have gone fully plant-based. So hopefully that also has a trickle-down effect where more restaurants and, and cafes and establishments will follow suit soon. Um, nine is Berlin with 80,000 people of the 3.6 million residents identifying themselves as vegan. So I should note that this figure was from 2016. So, um, but we are sure that this number has grown exponentially as people are more conscious of their sustainability and their carbon footprint. Um, and then rounding out the list is uh, the top 10 is Cape Town. Uh, it's very, very exciting for South Africa to have two entrants on our list. So while Cape Town has a way to go in terms of enacting climate change, combating policies, um, there are enough vegan dish and product offerings to keep it in the top 10. There's actually um, a parallel a number of, of vegan dish and product offerings in, in Cape Town is, as there is in LA. So it would be great to see Cape Town really step it up in terms of in terms of their climate change combating policies, and hopefully we'll see them higher up in the next list next year. Oh, thank you for that rundown. I mean, there were some surprises there, and uh, some ones to be expected. I mean, it's it's very surprising for me to to hear that London is is number one. I I grew up in the UK, and it's I know I know that they've done a lot of work um, to improve a lot of things. I guess I just have this memory of how it was in the 1980s. <laughs> <laughs> Time for you to visit. Time for you to come yeah, back. Things have obviously changed. I mean, that, that's just wonderful. And um, I'm not so surprised by Berlin. I'm not so surprised by um, 
Uh, Singapore, actually, as when you were talking, I was thinking about how um, this the clean meat movement is is really happening in Singapore, and they're doing some really great innovation. I know that uh, just um, they did the first, they decided to launch in Singapore first for their um, their clean meat chicken nuggets, if I understand well. And as a result, um, I just think Singapore makes doing this kind of business easy because I, I think in other countries, maybe in the United States, to get things passed through the FDA is really, really difficult. And, and especially when it's something really, really new, whereas Singapore, which just embraces technology and innovation, it, it's, it's something I think that uh, Singapore can be really proud of. 100%. You know, it's it's really, one thing that's really interesting is seeing the, the difference in sustainability strengths of each city. There isn't really a one size fit all approach to sustainability because each city, you know, has different cultural or geographic limitations or, um, you know, one example is Singapore, which happens, you know, like I said, it happens with the home and founding place for billions. So I feel very proud saying this, also being Singaporean. Um, Singapore is highly dependent on imports from other countries due to limited limited land mass, um, and it's buoyed by its need for food security. And and due to that, it pours a lot of capital into food tech. So Singapore's sovereign wealth fund, Tamasic Holdings, has become a major backer and supporter of plant based companies like Impossible and Next Gen um, Foods, which has done Tyndall. Um, the Tyndall um, Chicken, the plant-based chicken company. So the city is also, like you said, encourage alternative milk and, and egg companies like Oatly and Eat Just set up plants and operation centers in the city. So I guess this, yeah, the sky's the limit at, at this point. So I think Singapore really is the place to watch for the next few years and, and see how it makes its mark, considering it's also such a small country compared to the rest of the cities on these lists. So we're hoping to see maybe a top three entry for Singapore next year if we're lucky. So um, were there any other surprises within the top 10 and out of the top 10 that, that kind of surprised your team when they were published? I don't think there were any huge surprises um, in terms of that there were no dark horses on this list. I think personally, I was surprised, I might be biased, that Sydney didn't make the cut having lived there for a few years with, with healthy living being part of you know, Sydney culture. But um, with anything, but but if anything, this list should actually serve as motivation for cities like city, Sid, sorry, for cities like Sydney who have very healthy reputations and li you know, lifestyle-based reputations to really step their game up, and for businesses and brands to provide more plant-based and sustainable options for those who who seek them, especially when they're traveling. Yes, I'm. I'm also kind of surprised that Vancouver isn't on the list. Maybe also I'm a little bit biased. I'm just yeah. 45 minutes from Vancouver, but I have this idea in my head that that uh, Vancouver is, you know, quite a healthy city. People that live here are generally very healthy, and because we have so much access to the outdoors, I mean, there are so many vegan restaurants and. I thought that their that their waste management was pretty good, but um, yeah, I, I agree. Same same with uh, same with Sydney. <laughs> Maybe next year we'll include a, an outdoors category and, and factor in beautiful natural parks and, yes. and outdoor spaces, because um, then definitely places in Canada will just shoot up the list. I'd I'd love to visit Canada uh, more often, so hopefully that's a that's a bucket list place to to visit Vancouver later on this year. Yes, yeah, it's it's pretty beautiful. It's pretty beautiful. So when we make spend a lot of time and effort making these reports and you know a huge investment like of of resources to create such an, an amazing resource, like we have to do something with it, right? We have to have some sort of takeaways. So what are some of the takeaways for a billion and what are some of the takeaways for the, the reader um, uh, and other interested stakeholders? What, what are the main takeaways? So I think that my main takeaway for, for everyone for, from this report is that our findings show that plant-based living and sustainability isn't just a fad. It's not going to go away anytime soon. Our, our world depends on us you know, committing to the cause um, and, and major, you know, major cities and their governments worldwide are taking transparent and measured actions to ensure that these cities are ready to support the demand for more sustainable infrastructure and ways of living. 
Um, so I think that the last few years have propelled major cities and those in them, you know, citizens and residents living in them to sit up straight and try to remain competitive with each other in terms of adopting sustainable policies and lifestyles. Um, you know, it, it's, it's, it's inspiring to see these cities step up and more vegan restaurants and, and, and grocery chains and product lines um, come out because people want to do their part. So I think, that, yeah, that's the main takeaway for, for me in, in, in the instance is that sustainability isn't a fad. You know, we all have to keep doing our part and, um, you know, keep committed to the cause, essentially. Excellent. Thank you. Thank you. And because this whole event is about vegan travel um, and we have all sorts of different kinds of vegan travelers on that are attending this summit like how does this report actually help vegan travelers so the report can help vegan and conscious travelers in, in a few ways i i don't want to shoebox into just vegan travelers because it could help like i've said before um you know a flexitarian who is trying to be more plant-based um we don't really we don't want to shoebox it just to vegans on the app we're, we're very inclusive in, in that um in that instance so um, you know, with most of the world slowly but surely reopening to travel, consumers are itching to, to explore new cultures and countries. Believe me, my to, my to travel list is triple what it used to be before, before the pandemic and um, have no idea how I'm going to swing it with work. Uh, <laughs> um, but the report makes it easier for vegan travelers to ensure that they visit cities that align with their values. And you know when when this report is utilized in tandem with the discovery tools such as a billion, um, it ensures that traveling and finding vegan dining options is as seamless as possible. Um, additionally, as I mentioned earlier, the report can also serve to guide young professionals and and whoever who may look um, to be moving anytime soon to explore cities that they want to live in. So you know, for example, knowing that London is so focused on future you know, future proofing its city and knowing how accommodating it is for those who seek plant-based options um, has really made the city somewhere I'd love to live in. Yeah, yeah, I agree. I can imagine that uh, if if I was looking to move to a place that I would be certainly putting these cities on the top of my list, knowing that you know as as a as a digital nomad or or to just spend an extended period of time in a city. I mean, I would know for sure that, okay, Berlin, probably yeah. gonna be pretty good. And then I can just sort of get a nice overall picture. And I really do invite people who are watching to go and download the report because it's presented so beautifully. And I can know in a snapshot, okay, I, I, I'm interested in, in um, living somebody somewhere, I'm interested in, you know, not needing to have a car and and not needing to uh, and having lots of restaurants and and to be in a place where there are lots where innovation is is valued. Um, then you know you you can see all of that information in in just a, a a couple of pages on the report. So it's just wonderful. Okay, so Leanne, before we finish it up, is there anything else that you want to tell us or share with us? Um, I guess I would love, I mean, I've been in London for the last last few weeks, so I'd love to share a bit more about London. Maybe again, I'm a little more biased because I've been here um, and I know you used to live here. So maybe this will convince you to come visit again and try out, uh, try out being in the city while using the Abillion app. Um, so a couple of great things about London and also encourage, you know, viewers to, our users to visit as well. Um, unfortunately, I'm only visiting London at this stage and I'm based in much sunnier Singapore, but I've absolutely fallen in love with the city over the last few weeks. Um, firstly, you know, this is why I think it's the, it's the best um, future proof, future city of the world is the city has an incredible amount of vegan restaurants and dishes. There's at least one or two vegan options in every restaurant I've visited over the last few weeks, um, which I think is incredible. So according to our report, there's actually almost 900 restaurants with vegan op options just in London city itself alone. Um, which is absolutely incredible. So depending on what suburb you're in, there will be multiple vegan and organic produce grocers. Um, you know, I think living in Singapore, we take that for granted, especially because we're so reliant on, on importing food. Um, I spent far too much time and money in, at Planet Organic and Notting Hill, but I got to try out some like very interesting and, and niche homegrown vegan brands that I've never heard of before. Um, secondly, another reason it's very future, future ready and future proof is that people cycle everywhere. 
um, which is inspiring to see, whether it's to cut down their carbon footprint or just to save time commuting. It's, it's great to see bike lanes implemented on pretty much every single major road here. Um, and, and lastly, you can already see sustainability policies being enacted, whether it's um, new trees or green spaces being planted and implemented or electric car charging stations on every other corner. Um, it's inspiring to see that the city has made a, such a commitment to giving its residents options for, for living a more sustainable lifestyle. Mm, all of that sounds amazing. What's your favorite uh, vegan place that you visited in London so far? Ooh, a pharmacy in Notting Hill. I am um, not embarrassed to say that I've been back a couple of times and I've tried about half their menus. So um, I'm probably going to go back very soon. I'm, I'm in London for a couple more days before I'm back in Singapore. So I'll probably try out the rest of the menu. They should, just, they should just sponsor me at this point, honestly. <laughs> <laughs> There's a lot of uh, reviews on pharmacy on a billion, I guess. Mainly for there you. are. I feel like half of them are mine now just because I've been back so many times. <laughs> They're sick of me at this point. Can I give you a London recommendation? Of course, I, I love them, please. Okay, it's not a restaurant actually. I didn't even know about it until I went to London with a friend a, a couple of years back. I, I have been fairly recently. It's close to Hyde Park. I can't remember the name of it, um, but it's this beautiful war memorial. Now, don't get me wrong, I don't love war. I don't even like war. Um, um, it's, you know, I think the world, world would probably be a lot better without it. But, but a group of people in London, um, maybe the government, I'm not quite sure, created this beautiful, beautiful war memorial to animals that have died in war. Oh, wow. um, and um, it's it's a very beautiful war memorial and um, they and of course I don't think vegans constructed this war memorial but they do say on there that the animals had no choice about being oh it just makes me feel wibbly just thinking about it but um, they, they it's there's a thing saying you know the animals didn't have any choice and you know I, going there is extremely moving yeah. And um, and just so beautiful because uh, we often forget about these victims of war and it's it's just so beautiful. It's between two two roads. It's close to Hyde Park, and it's actually also very close to this very old. It was Colin Patrick Gaudreau that told me about it, but um, this beautiful old pet cemetery where people were burying and memorializing their pets. Um, 150 years ago wow. you can't go into it you can just sort of peek through the fence but it's it's really beautiful so I really invite you to to go and check that out and um and just just see this very very special little spot because I don't know we don't really think so much about these animals that that end up dying dying in uh in wars and there are a lot when you start thinking about it but just to have their <laughs> their well sacrifice is not the right word because they didn't choose to to do it to, to be part of this war but um to have their their that, that that honored in such a beautiful way i think is really nice anyway that's my tip for london thank you <laughs> it's a I'll, I'll, um... somber one i guess but uh yeah it's very humble there, anyone, about. anyone that goes there is always really really moved by this very special memorial anyway you okay? Do you need a tissue? <laughs> <laughs> no, no, I'm fine. I'm fine. <laughs> All right. Well, Leanne, I want to thank you again and thank you to a billion for being part of this online summit. I really encourage everybody that's watching to go download the app, give it a try, give it a play and go download the report and have a little bit of a look. And um, again, thank you so much, uh, Leanne, for being part of the summit. Thank you for having me and everyone go download. I promise you won't regret it. You know, you might find a couple of great options or great new options in, in your own city, even if you aren't traveling. So um, it's definitely, it's an incredible tool for you guys to utilize. Fantastic. And don't forget the um, attendees. There are so many other incredible talks by amazing people like Leanne. So please go on to um, nbw.haysummit.com to see all of these other talks. Thank you so much, Leanne. Thank you.